Have you ever spent hours, days, just creating a visual perfectly for what was requested only to be asked for that visual to be changed? What if I told you you wouldn't have to rebuild measures, do visual tricks or any formatting on those visuals again? But check this. Everything you see on this page is all driven by the sales metric that we got up here. We've got sales here, sales there, the target, which is previous year sales versus target, which is the difference between the two, the variance, if it's new customer, repeat customer, here we've got the additional of changing of the weeks. Again, it's all related to sales. You have dynamic chart titles and you have this scatter plot that also has a tool tip. So you can imagine recreating all of this again for just a different metric, say like margin percent. We're well, not with this trick because you can change it and everything changes. Now everything is in the format percentage. Everything is margin across here here, here, titles, down here, and even your tooltips. Amazing, right? And let me show you how I did it. So to start off, the main thing that is driving all these changes is using a field parameter. And how you create a field parameter, if you've never done it before, is you go up to the modeling view, and then under here you have new parameters, and then down here you have fields. Click on that. This is where you can create your field parameter by giving it a name. And then all you have to do is just drop in the different measures that we got it in here. So what we've got is like total sales, which is what I've got as my sales here. And then also I've got margin percentage, number of orders and ATV as well, which are all these ones here. And all you have to do is just drop them in and then you create your build parameter. And in this case, I've created one that's called KPI metrics parameter. And then it would just create this view here where you can see you have the sales margin, ATV and orders. So whatever you drop in, you can rename them within the actual fill parameter. So at the moment that was called total sales. I then renamed it to sales, margin percent kept the same number of orders. I just replaced with a hash and stay in number off. And that's how you set all the different names. And that's important when we get to actually creating your main core measure that will drive all your other measures. So if you've ever used fill parameters before, you'll know that you can just drop them into a visual and then you can change the different measure that you've got in the actual visual and then you can see the overall results. And when you've ever tried to apply it to other measures, it doesn't work. And the reason is that the fill parameter actually changes on the basis of it uses a name. It keeps the core thing where it changes the measure, which works fine in a visual. But as soon as you try and place it through another measure, then all you get is the name and not the actual original measure. So to get around this, I needed to create what is basically something that captures the name and then we can use another measure to then do a used switch to capture the name to then give you the measure that you actually needed. And to capture what the actual measure is called and we use this in the main measure that we're gonna create as our core measure and then also any dynamic formatting, which I'll show you. I use this little trick that SQL BI created, which shows you how to be using a selected value with field parameters in Power BI. Because you can't, like I mentioned, just drop in your field parameter to give you your output of your measure and then if you try to create any measures off the back of it, you wouldn't be able to. This here, which is all I'm using because I didn't care because I'm always going to have one metric used. So all I needed was just this information here. And then I used another trick with the shade had in another article about using the switch function, but that one's simple. I can just walk through that bit, but just giving you an idea, if you want to actually have a read about how this all works, all the information is here and it's in the description below. But in essence, if you ever look at a fill parameter, it creates these tables. These two are hidden. So you've got your order, what the KPI measure is called, where it's sat, and then you've actually got what the name is. So in essence, when you go into what this is, if we open this up a bit bigger, there we go. You're doing selected columns and then summarize and we're summarizing to get what the table is called which is what the fill parameter is called here so you can see kpi underscore metrics underscore parameter and then here you are then going into what the actual parameter is named which is this column here and then you're selecting what the actual measure is under the fields and then you're coming back with what the final output is which is giving you what the name is so then what happens is when you drop this into a card visual, you'll see, so let's go here, get a card. Oh, if we go here, click on a card. If we drop in this, you'll see it says sales. So it doesn't give you the actual result of the amount. Which one does this? 
is this one here. And as you can see, that's the result there. And all that this one is doing, which is going to be a play of this. So if we were just remove this card visual, we then want to off the back of this, which has been created. So whatever you put as your parameter, you just want to change the name. So if you just called it parameter, then it just needs to just be parameter, 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 and then parameter fields, and then parameter, parameter there. So just make sure it's all matched to whatever you call your field parameter. But then to make your core visual, this is where the little trick comes in with using switch because all we're doing is going as a variable, the value is whatever's selected up here. So as we can see, we've got sales selected and then we're going into an, another variable, which is then gonna be used as our result. And then we're just using switch to go through to go if this equals sales then return the total sales measure result and then the same happens for orders atv and margin and then blank if none is selected i've always got this set to being purely on single select always selected you might have cases where you don't want that to happen so it's good to do the blank and also follow the extra bit in the sql bi one to do if not selected in then returns a blank because that way it won't break your visual and that's basically all you need to do to create a measure that then you can use in any other measures post that because what this is now doing is using your fill parameter filter to then tell what measure to use whenever you select it the only issue is as we can see we have one that's margin percent the other ones are number based that's fine but if you've got margin percent if you were to just leave it as is and you just kept the formatting as is this was come through as number and the same for margin to get around that issue this is where you can use the dynamic format which i've got selected here so all you have to do for anything we got here so we just got the selected measure for now you just come down dynamic format click on that and then it will take you to here so i've already done it this is what it is once you've done it you can select between the format and measure to go back and forth on each one. And then all I'm doing is technically the same logic, but this time, instead of having to put a result, because you don't have to do that when you're just doing your formatting, all I'm doing is a variable. And because this is only just a simple switch of if it equals margin percent, make it a percentage, everything else just be a number with the thousand separator in. All I've done again is just point the value into the metric selected title. So anything you select on your fill parameter is what matches. So if it's sales, it's going to do this because it's not margin. When it comes to margin, it would change it to a percentage. And all I've done is do return, switch, true. If this, do this. If not, that. And then that's how you get the formatting. So you don't have to worry about whenever you switch between different things you get a different result and this is why when you change to margin everything goes to percentage as you can see all over here so now that's set up all we have to do is then just apply it to any measure we want and i'm going to use as an example here i've got same period last year so if i click on this one if i was doing sales like a normal measure here and i wanted to look at the previous year all i would do is do calculate total sales same period last year and then point to whatever we want to look at in this case i'm using dim day which is the order date in the actual data table but because we have this selected measure that selects any measure that comes from the field parameter i've added that in here and then that drives this result here and this result here and also additional parts where it's looking at what the previous was with target difference and then i'm doing the same with target difference where you have if selected measure in this case sales take away whatever your target is in this case same period last year is what's being used here so it's basically going if this which is that one take away this gives the result of versus target which is what everything here is versus target there and that's where that works like that and the great thing is you can just keep building on them and building on them you can use them as reference labels you can use them to do conditional formatting because now we have this one if we wanted to do the conditional formatting that changes the background of this particular card here all i'm using is the target diff and i'm just going if it's greater than zero g if it's less than zero r and if anything else a so that's green red amber and then all you have to do is just go into your visual go over to call out and then under the colors but just this bit here you just need to set the rule where it goes red amber green add it in using the same format and then it's there and it will update every single time you click on any of these so example if i go atv it goes red because everything is down go to orders it's orange because targets up but repeat customers are up but it's new customers are down and that's why it's making it orange everything else is showing green because overall this has been fine during that period the only thing we can see here is i probably needed to fix some formatting on there because the difference is only 34 pounds but it's adding an extra zero that's just little things you just need to look out for when you're doing any of the formatting and again whenever you do any of these 
come to those chart bits next is whenever you're doing any of these formatting which is number based all you have to do is go to your format again do dynamic formatting and just keep copying over the same thing that was written for the dynamic formatting in the selected measure that way it's always the same always the same we have to do is just do copy paste copy paste the only thing you need to do is remember if you add any new measures then you need to include if the formatting is going to be different there and then update each one and so that simply covers how you can quickly just put everything together create your one measure and then keep building all the different additional measures that you want to drive off the back of it to then give you all these different results that do all these different things here including conditional formatting reference label anything like that you can just build it off the back of that and then whenever you change it it will update and then the same goes for if you do your chart titles i'll go for an example here we have again our value is always using whatever's selected up in your visual and then because i want a variation on the results i have my variable metric this year and then all i'm doing is going selecting which one it's going to be based on if it equals whatever's been selected and then i'm automatically formatting it and the reason why i'm automatically formatting because this measure is going to be purely text because it's going to be the written title that's going to be dynamic and then i've just run through and just done the formatting for each one technically i could have just done margin and then did everything else as a format with a thousand separator but i wanted to be able to have the control because as we saw there are times when actually that particular format might be an issue if it ends up being less than 100 it adds the extra zero so that's where it's good to have the different ones here because then you have more control than just allowing it to just format automatically to a thousand separator. And then all we're doing is then giving the result of what the title says. So in this case, we're saying whatever is selected. So that's going to be sales. So that's going to be sales during with two spaces either side and then max year, which was 2017. So sales during 2017 was and then the result of what's in here, so whatever the metric says. And then if it's going to be sales, it's going to be a thousand separator amount and then compared to the previous period was and then i'm just putting in the target diff format and what that one is is another text-based measure that is basically giving you an up or down arrow with a percentage so in essence what you get is this result here so as you can see sales during 2017 was 733,215 and compared to the previous period was up by 20 percent so 2016 2017 is actually up 20% sales wise. And as we can see, we can see that here as well. And then it tells you over here what it's like compared to each category. And then the one other thing is it's really simple to do the tooltip because all that the tooltip is, in this case, I've just used the same table here and then just set it to the top five high and top five low of product names. And then I've just created a tooltip. It doesn't show anything because I don't have anything selected. And that's the key thing here. If you do this, it must not have something selected. So if I just go in here and then if I just do margin, you can see it selects the margin. So when you build it, you can just add it in and then it selects what it selects. However, if you have something selected, we go back and then hover over it won't show anything because we're selected margin in that one and this one wants to show us sales so what we want to do is just come back when you do this you just want to create whatever your visual is select a fill parameter first and then once you're happy with it just unselect it'll be broken like that and then you can just go to your visual come over to here go to general go to your tool tips go to report page select what your tool tip is make sure that the page is actually set to tool tip and which is when you set it up you have your canvas setting and you can set to tool tip and then i've just changed the custom size to it but also in the page information if you just create a page you can just do select allow to use a tool tip and then you get the result but you must be selecting on the back of the canvas so if i remove that again go back and as you can see working again and then working in the order of where I've got the top five products and bottom five products based on the target difference. So now you've seen how you can create that measure and reuse different measures for metrics that you've put in your fill parameter. What do you do if you suddenly have a new metric that you want to add to your current fill parameter and then make it flow through to the rest of the visuals? Well, as promised, it won't take hours or days to redo all this. It will just take a few minutes and what we're going to do is use the measure total profit, which is basically a sum of the profit amount 
on the sales table, which is the driver for the margin percentage. And as we can see for now, we don't actually have it here. So now what we're going to do is add this through all the different steps. And then you can see how it updates as we go through it. So if we come back to our field parameter, the main one we need here is our actual filter. So this is the one where it's got a little question mark over it and which is created when you create the actual fill parameter in the first place. Over here is where you want to add in something new. And then all you have to do is just say, let's just take this one because it's just there. We just want to add a comma because now we're going to create an extra line. We then need to just paste that in. And then we just want to create what we're going to call this one because we're going to use total profit. Let's just call this one profit. And then under here, we just want to call this total profit. As we can see, it's there, but let's just type it in so we don't end up tabbing it in and then it ends up creating an even longer one. So we've got it there and then the order, let's put that as four. So now we have that one there. We can go up to here and we can see it. But if we select it, everything breaks because we don't have it set in the visual yet. So if we come back to there, we can see everything updates. We don't there. So for now, let's just leave this like this because you can see everything that's being driven by this visual. We don't have anything in yet. So then what we need to do is not do this one because this one already does what it needs to do. We then need to come to here and this is where we want it to select what we want it to be called. So we know if we select profit, which is going to be this one, it's going to be called profit. So whatever it equals is selected. Here's the same name. And then we want the measure total profit. There we go. And now if we press return, we are now getting data pulling through as you can see because everything is all driven by that one measure and you can see how simple that was all you have to do is just have that one measure selected measure set up and just add your thing there and add your thing there the only other thing is if we had different formatting we would need to take that into account so as you can see up here we've got decimal places with extra bits here so in reality what we need to do is now go okay now we've done that one we want to change the chart title so the two charts I've got is the last X weeks, which is this one here, which is controlled by, you can change the number of weeks, what you're looking at. So in this case, I've got the last five weeks, and then it tells you what the performance was in the last five weeks, which would have been the last five weeks of 2017. Hence why you see week 53, where it's carried over into an extra few days. So if we start with this one first, if we go up to our one here, which is what's being controlled, we then just need to add in the information here. So in reality, we want to nick the same as sales really. So we can just copy that, paste in, change this to profit, and then that's done that one. And then we want to do the same with the second metric Come down here, paste it in, change that to profit save it and then if we click out we can now see it's formatted and now we need to do the same for this one over here and then we just go down to the measure here nick that one come down i think i'll probably make that one less zero as well and then we change this to profit let's return then click off the measure and now I click off this we can see it's updated hopefully i don't hover over it but as you can see we have now the 14 percent up and the rest has changed so we can see that furniture is down profit wise everything else is up profit wise but the last five weeks of the year was actually down and then as you saw when we did the tool tips if we hover over the tool tip we suddenly have profit updating it automatically as well and it works with a fill parameter that you use for changing what the information is here as well so if we go product category we can see the difference there subcategory customer segment state if we wanted to go for region and and then now if we want to go state and then for a particular region, say south, and then updates everything as well. As we can see here, profit still, profit there. And then if we were to change this back to say sales, you can see it all updates. South was actually up across the board. Only had a few things that were below target, but overall was up 31%. And then we can take that off and then we're back how we were. Told you it only take a few minutes and not hours and days to be able to update anything you want. The only thing that takes the time is just doing the setup and then creating any new measures off the back of it. Updating it is as simple as just a few little updates to a line that includes a new measure that you want in and you're done. I'd love to know if there's any little tricks or anything you've tried using this. So please let me know in the comments below. And also, if you wanted to know how I created like this card visual here or the gauge chart here, you can check out the videos here. But also I have links in the description below as well. And as always, until next time.